Hi, welcome to a new screencast for JavaScript. Now, we have finished HTML and CSS. The third technology in this trio of front-end development is JavaScript. As you saw, HTML provides the structure of a web page. CSS provides the presentation for the, for the web page. JavaScript adds uh, interactivity or the dynamic nature that a website has to the page. Now you will see in a little while in, in, in the next upcoming screencast that JavaScript is mainly used to, to manipulate or obtain values from a DOM tree after the web page is loaded onto your browser. Now let me give you a quick example of how uh, the, the interactive nature of JavaScript. I have this web page open over here which is a form. As you can see over here it is on the same page and I, it's it's interactive you see when I press on it something appears so it's like based on an action it changes the DOM tree it's selectively displaying me elements within the same page it's not changing the page the page remains the same as you can see over here if I say my favorite movie is let's say gladiator and then if I see the page doesn't change I'm on the same page but it selectively changes the text and the form so as you have already seen how HTML pages are built these are separate inputs because we have to use values from these inputs and the text keeps on changing and this this change is provided by JavaScript this is called interactivity or dynamic experience that you can provide through your website okay so this is something that uh, is possible by JavaScript although this is something that we are not going to do in this course or in this series of screencasts but this this is this is the power of JavaScript it, uh, it provides interactivity or dynamism to a web page uh, by manipulating the DOM tree okay now let's go back to our uh, basics uh, in this uh, screencast we're going to go through how do we link JavaScript or how do we add JavaScript to our existing pages as we did with CSS we're going to do the same thing with JavaScript so this is called as location Wait, where, do, where are we going to put it uh, let's start with the first one which said that uh, we, we found that the first way of adding JavaScript to your code is inline inline okay now how do we put it inline let's say I create a button on my page and let's say the button says uh, click me okay now this would be something like this I'll see I say a button which which has no action right now because it doesn't do anything I haven't connected it to anything now what I can do is uh, HTML provides me with an attribute called on click this is an event handler so that whenever I click uh, it provides me uh, to pro to give an action whenever the button is clicked so over here I've said click me I say on click I can I can add JavaScript code over here instead of going to a function a separate function or a separate file or a separate location where I define JavaScript I can actually write my JavaScript code within this uh, quotations now let's say uh, we didn't start with that but there is a there is a function in JavaScript called alert which displays a pop-up message so if I say alert and I'm going to say hello world and then a semicolon actually this is a statement this is a function in JavaScript I can write many uh, series of lines separated them by semicolons and still work so over here I'm going to say alert hello world so this this function which actually bring up a pop-up once I click the button so this I'm adding the the script the JavaScript inside uh, the inside the HTML uh, tag itself that's why it's called inline you remember that we did the same thing with CSS whenever we put some, with style attribute and provide some values within that attribute we call that the inline CSS although it's not a good way because it's limited by the space over here we, we cannot do that it's good for debugging but not good for actual websites because we don't we, we don't want to do that and since it's selective we don't want to increase the size of the page as well so let's say uh, I'll go back now to my page and then say click me you will see this pop-up button which is because of the alert function which says hello world okay so this thing is because it's in line now let me go back let's go back to the go to the next one which is internal now internal means I put internal over here but it should not be over here internal means I can uh, write my JavaScript in a separate tag 
within the same HTML page. See, this one was specific to a tag, uh, an element itself, only applies to this button. Suppose I wanted to write for the whole page. So in this case, I can put it as an internal page. Now, to put it as internal, you have to write your JavaScript within the script tag. Now, the script tag has an attribute which is called type, similar to CSS style, and we can say text JavaScript. Now, this tag is optional when it comes to HTML5 because HTML5 assumes that we are whenever there's a script tag by default you're going to use JavaScript as with CSS whenever you're going to use the style tag you are going to use it in CSS so it's optional but it's good to put it there now I what I can put in the script tag is I can actually call a, another function a function or let's say I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to say alert and then say again hello world okay so now let's just go back to our page and see what happens. I'm going to refresh this. You see the hello world came first. This is the this is because of the function, because of the script tag. And then when I click on it, there is another one that comes up. Because we have inline and both internal. Now this internal loads when the page loads. So that's why when you refresh it, it will be activated. So it's it's by default on load. Okay. Now, so this is how we define internal. We define internal by you enclosing every the, our JavaScript code within the script tag. Now internal can be defined can can be placed inside your HTML file in two places. The, one of the places is within the body, usually preferred at the last, uh, just before the body tag. And you can also put it inside the head tag. So for example, inline also goes over here. Let's say internal. Sorry internal also goes over here where we can say script again type and I'm going to say text and then I can just simply go over here and then say alert and say I am in the head okay just to make it more meaningful let me just go down over here and say I am in the body and I'm going to say I'm in line should have thought about that earlier. Let's say hello world. That's it's more. Um, let's say inline. Okay. Let's go back to our page. I'm going to refresh this. You see, I get I'm in the head because it starts loading from the top. The, the the page starts loading from the top and sees the first script and it displays it. And then I press it and then it does it. I'm in the body because it now goes and loads the whole body and then it finishes it. And then this one is since it's associated with the click of the button uh, it will only be activated when I click the button so you see the page loads from top to bottom and uh, in that case you will see that uh, I'm going to have this first and over here now there's a question that I might ask you is why would anyone put it in the head and not in the body or vice versa the issue is Suppose you have a script which needs to be activated before the page is loaded, which, uh, for example, you are, dis you, you are actually uh, making something invisible. So you don't want the form page to load and then the text to disappear or an action happening before the page is loaded. So in that case, you would prefer it to appear first so that it can manipulate the DOM tree before actually the DOM tree is passed and put in sub into the page or rendered by your web page if you want some action to happen before the page loads you put it in the head tag but suppose you want some action to happen after the page is loaded then you can put it over here for safely for example let's say I want I want I want to initiate an action over here uh, we are going to learn this a little later which is called functions I'm just going to show it to you for for the sense that it makes like for example if over here I call a function let's say um, call alert okay I'll call this function I'm just calling this function where I define this function over here inside this tag so and function uh, don't worry about the syntax about this we're going to learn that later on it's just to demonstrate what I'm just going to show you so I, I'm calling this function over here 
Now, it doesn't make any sense to put this in the head tag because it will only be activated once the whole page is loaded. So, so it's better to put it in the body at the bottom so that you know you don't put a lot of things inside the head. So you see the web page instantly. You don't have a lot of things. That's that's one reason why we don't like the style or the CSS script we puts inside the head because we have to like look at the page with all these head tags with scripts and all these things earlier before we actually go into it. So. Uh, this will be a good idea so now when we go back to our page let's say I'm going to refresh this and then see I'm in the head and then when I click over here it goes to I'm um, the body so it, it makes more sense when it's after uh, when, when it's inside the uh, uh, when some something is going uh, so let's let's make it more clear anything any function that you want to load before the page is loaded in the browser should be inside the head tag any function which you want to load after the page is loaded like event handling or any other stuff that should be put in in the body tag just before the ending of the body tag so this is internal now the third way of doing that similar to CSS is external you can also put create a new file and then link it like your CSS page but it's a little different in this case let's say I'm going to create a new file I'm going to call this file uh, let's say script dot why am I calling it over here yeah let's say I'm going to save it as script dot js every the file uh, a JavaScript file ends with an extension of js okay it's usually wise to put it in its own folder so I'm going to create a new folder which is called js and then I'm going to save this inside this script.js so it's good to be organized so now I have this over here now let's say I'm going to again do the same thing I'm going to say alert and I'm going to say I am in an external page okay now that's it I'm just going to go back to my original page and we just saw how we can do that uh, we did internal now let's let's do the external of it okay uh, I'm going to remove that I'm just going to put this as the same way that we had earlier so that you don't get confused we're going to do functions later on so that I'm so I'm going to put them in line and then over here I'm just going to put I'm in the body now after that we're going to put external now okay an external I can call this the link the external page over here now unlike CSS we had two different tags when you put it internal you use the style tag and when we put it inside the uh, uh, like a link in the head tag we use the link uh, tag to do that but unlike that in JavaScript we use the same we use the same tag script okay and then I'm going to use the same thing the only thing that you do is you add another attribute called source this is the place where you actually specify the script file external script file, and then you close it it, it is remember that it's a self it's it's not a self closing tag it is a paid tag so you have even though it's empty you have to still close it like this now this way I'm going to refer to the file that is over there okay now again external, external similar to internal external can also be defined in the head based upon where you want to start it before the file loads or you can also do the same thing just at the ending of your body tag both are acceptable okay so this way I'm going to I can I can do both of them and the, both of them are acceptable okay now let's, let's see what what happens with our page I'm going to refresh it I'm in the head then it says I'm in an external page this is the second one that we put which is calling it from the external page and then I'm in the body which is the the internal one and then I'm in the external page so it goes back so it's it's uh, executing it in the order that it comes in so to summarize we have three places where we can put our JavaScript the first one is inline I can add my JavaScript function inside the tag itself now uh, a disadvantage of doing that okay there's one mistake over here whenever you're putting it inside this make sure you don't use the same quotations 
because that will think that it's the end of that so it's it's better to have it in a single quotations to make it more meaningful although both of them means the same a string can be in a single or double quotation so this way it will make more sense so it can be in line it can be internal now internal again we can put it we have to put that in the script tag it is a paired tag so it's close opens and close and all the javascript is in with within that now this is loaded whenever the page is loaded so it's always active now this internal can be placed inside the body or inside the head you place it inside the head when you think we have to load some functions which should be activated before the page loads or we have some functions which should be activated after the page loads then we put that in the body tag so after that the last one is external suppose we define all our script in an external page external JavaScript page then we can link that page to our HTML page by using again the same tag but with an empty body we don't use we don't put anything inside it because the whole script is defined inside the, this tag the only difference is we put another attribute which is a source and then we put the location of our JavaScript file again we can with external also we can put it inside the head tag or inside the body tag so if I put it in the head tag again the same rule applies that if I want to load any function before the page loads it should be inside the head tag and if I want to load any function after my whole page is loaded then I put it inside the body tag so that's it upon location let's in the next screencast go into basics of JavaScript